I'm Gabby. Welcome to Wonderful Wild Watercolours, a class to get you started using this gentle, expressive medium. In this class, I'll share with you the tools and the methods that I use and encourage you to explore your own as you journey with me. Let's get started. Firstly, we'll take a look at the types of tools and mediums you could use. This is my toolkit, but there's more than you need here. So I'll share with you the things that I find work best. Here's an example of a range of watercolour brushes that you might like to choose from. Some of them are quite cheap, like um, this one and this one. And you can pick them up from Spotlight or Office Works quite often in a pack of about five to eight of them sometimes and they're usually under $12 for a packet. Uh, these ones you can even buy from Bunnings as well or Spotlight again and you can usually buy a pack of them for also under $10 and they're really handy for the bigger areas. I want to show you why these ones are good. These ones are good watercolours because watercolour brushes because they are soft. They're soft and flexible. They're very absorbent. They soak up a lot of the water and they move easily on the page. We can look at that later. This one is actually a Chinese calligraphy brush and it's similar. So it soaks up the water and it moves really easily on the page. Now these ones, you can also use these for acrylic paint. They're a little bit harder, a little bit stiffer but they do form a really nice point when they're wet so they can do a more detailed or fine area. This one is a more expensive brush. This one was about 30 to $40 from an art shop and it's very, very soft and very full. You can soak up a lot of water with that. And it has actually a quite fine point as well when you get it wet, which is very nice to play with. In my watercolour kit, I've also got some art liners and these when you draw with an art liner and then you put water over the top it has some really interesting effects of um, running. I've also got in my watercolour kit just a really light pencil like an H, an HB or a 2H. Clean water is really important to make your colours as bright and vibrant as possible. I've got three different types of watercolours in front of me but there are so many to choose from. I recommend the Micador brand from Spotlight and art stores and online you can buy them. Um, this is the, this is my favorite one. It's the Ko Ino and they have the most beautiful, vibrant colors. This one, you can pay a lot of money for these, um, $60 in an art shop, but I've also seen the same type and possibly even the same product online for as cheap as $12. So, you know, you can choose what you want to pay for each one. You can buy the um, Micador disc of these, but these ones I got from Kmart for $2 and they're terrible. Don't ever buy them. But Micador do some other types as well and so do Montmart and I think they're okay. I'll show you how to load a brush using my medium brush. This is a good all-rounder brush. It's a size 8 Roy Mac Achiever Round India. I don't know those numbers. I think I got this one from somewhere like an art shop in a packet of five, but you can buy them individually as well. So first thing we do, so we fill up our paintbrush. Just give it a good dab in the water. Then choose colour, any colour, doesn't really matter which one. Hmm, I would like to use some purple or blue. The problem with these ones is sometimes it's tricky to see what colour it is. So when I dab my brush, I make sure that all my bristles are facing the same direction. So we dab well, and lie it down on its side so we don't dab straight down, we dab by lying the brush on its side and dragging it towards us. 
So after you've been dabbing and turning your brush with the water on the brush, making a little smooth paste, what I have is quite a dark, a dark paste. See how my point is um, all together, my bristles aren't sticking out, so I can create a lovely shape with my brush. So have a go of loading your brush. Okay, after we've loaded our brush, any colour, you are free to draw whatever lines come out on the page. So just practice drawing the brush towards you. Push down with the brush and drag it. Use the tip of the brush, do soft lines, curvy lines. See how many lines you can make. Lie the brush down, stand the brush up. But always remember that the brush is a little like a cat. It doesn't like having the, bris the um, hairs being pushed the wrong way. They like to lie down. So try and fill the page with as many different lines as you can. This is called a wet brush, wet on dry. So the page is dry and the brush is wet. Keep on going with your brush until you start to see your paint getting lighter and lighter and your brush is starting to get scratchy and dry. This is called a dry brush technique dry on dry. So you might even do little dabs. What type of effects can you create? What can your brush do? Wispy lines. So this is just one colour, just one brush. Filling up the page. There's a little bit of wet on that still so I'm just drawing that out. Then you can, if you've still got some paint on your brush, you can dip it in the water again and just see what happens when you just have water on your brush. So you paint with just water on your brush, taking your brush for a journey, doing different shapes. There's no right or wrong what type of lines can you create. Spend some time noticing, slow down your breath. Just watch, watch the paint on the page as it runs. I'm using the Derwent sketch pad. It's just a cheap drawing book, so the paper is not thick. This is not an artist quality book to draw on. <laughs> so that's also called wet on dry. Now we're going to do a different technique so it's called wet on wet I'm going to choose a large brush my foam brush and I'm going to create some wet paper so it doesn't matter what size your brush is if you only have a small brush you can use a sponge from home I also like to have an old towel or tea towel you can even dip your tea towel into the water and make your page a little damp but just spend a little bit of time dampening the page now this I'm just using the copy paper from you know office works or wherever so I've got some really cheap paper and I'm also going to show you what it's like on the more expensive paper as well some cheap paper and some expensive paper and I've got my brush I'll, I'll use the same paint type so again we load up our brush with some water and we dab, dab and drag creating our paste choose a different color there's no right or wrong whatever you feel led to whatever fills you with joy or expresses the feelings that you're feeling right now and then we put the wet on top of the wet. Wow. Then breathe and just notice the effect. Notice what happens when you put the wet paint onto the wet page. Watch it. Keep playing with different colours, 
different size brushes, what colours work well together? What happens when you use a large brush and put little dots on top? What happens when you use a little brush and put big dots on top? So a little bit of water on the bottom and then using a big brush. and drag, pull your own. What happens to the colours when you blend them together? What happens to the brush as you put a lot of water on it? Spend some time noticing what looks interesting to you. What happens if you use the tip of the brush, the side of the brush? What happens if you dab it? Just lying it down. You might notice the differences between where you've put some water and it's dried already. What happens when you put wet paint over the top of that? What happens when you use a dry brush over the wet paint. What different marks can you make? Spend some time exploring using your own techniques and your different types of brushes. Big brushes, little brushes. Now because you're doing this at home you can spend as long as you like. Fill as many pages as you like. You can try different types of paper. Copy paper, newspaper, Rice paper, kitchen paper, paper towel, toilet paper. So this is the fun that you get to have exploring with your medium. I could do this for hours. <laughs>
something on your page that makes you feel uncomfortable and you don't you don't like it sit with that feeling and breathe it's okay if you want to you can change your piece of paper at any time you can have lots of pieces of paper going at the same time you can use as many pieces of paper as you like but I do encourage you that if you've got something on your page that you're not so keen on just keep going you might change the shape change the direction of the paper you might turn it around so it's on a different angle look at it from a different perspective how does it feel to do the different marks how does it feel when you change something? Just notice each thought or feeling as it comes up. There's no right or wrong. This is a safe place to, to experiment with your mark making and to allow those different thoughts and feelings to come. There's no right or wrong here. Only just the little marks on the page and how it makes you feel. So keep on playing, keep on exploring, keep on allowing your imagination to go deep into your picture. When you filled up your page, sit back and have a look at it. What do you see? What do you notice? When I look at this page, my eye is drawn to this part here. I love the way the darker maroon is blending with the blue and the little tiny lines that go in between it I didn't put them there those were things that happened all by themselves the water and the paint they mixed together to create that I love those happy accidents the things that are outside of my control that make something beautiful I love the lines here where the dark maroon fades into the lighter maroon I made that by lying my brush down on its side and the water collected and pulled and it's darker on one side of the brush. What marks have you made on the page or what happy accidents have happened while you've been playing with the paint? What do you notice and what do you appreciate? What do you see? How did it happen? Try and think about the things on your page that you liked and try and recreate that. We're going to spend some time now thinking about how we made those special marks on the page. Choose some that you'd like to recreate and then find a new piece of paper and you'll spend some time recreating those marks that you like. An important thing to know about watercolours, when you start with the dark paint, you can't go light again unless you use a lot of water to lift that paint back off. We start with something light and go darker as we build up layers. And in my experience, that's the most effective way, especially if your paper is quite thin. I'm gonna use my um, more expensive watercolor paper to build up some layers. A lot of things happen on the page that you might not expect and that's okay that's part of the wildness and the beauty of watercolor what did you like in your last image i think that i really liked some of the um lying my brush down and what that reminded me of was um like flowers so i'm gonna just put some different leaf shapes and flower sort of petal shapes down with water on my page because I, I really liked them and I've got some blue water here um, that's okay because I'm going to continue using the same colors but if your paint has made your water a different color I do invite you to go and change your water oh that shape reminds me actually of a bird So as you're playing, I want, I want you to go with the mistakes, go with 
What does it remind you of? Ooh. You might just be watching this video or you might be joining in and creating as you go. But I do want to encourage you to play with your own paints as you go. Seeing what happens. What do you like? What are you trying to notice or recreate? I'm noticing that some of these remind me of little birds and I'm liking that. So I'm trying to direct my paintbrush to those kind of shapes. What kind of shapes are you making with your brush? What do they remind you of? You can use as many colours as you like. You can, anytime you want to change colour, um, wash your brush in between. If you like the colours blending together and you don't want to change the colour of your brush, that's also okay. There's a combination of colours called harmonious colours and whatever colours on the rainbow together next to each other, that's a harmonious colour and they bleed together very nicely. So the colours that are next to each other in the rainbow, if you choose three colours, that are next to each other, then that's a good harmonious uh, combination and they they usually uh, don't create brown when, when they mix together. So red and yellow and orange are an example of that. Also blue, purple and um, red are a good combination. Green and yellow and blue are a good combination. But see what you find. What what com combinations have you created? children playing in the background. You might be doing your art class with your children. If you have children, you might be doing this in peace and quiet of your home. Or maybe it's noisy. Whatever your environment is, allow your thoughts and your imagination to go deep into the watercolour process. And just let the noises around you be part of the background. Or you can invite them in and maybe the people around you would like to join in as well. So, I've just been playing around for a little while um, and I'm going to stop and pause and just notice and spend some time reflecting on the marks and lines that I've made. I'm really enjoying this part here. This is like, it reminds me of a cotton flower. I'm really also appreciating this little bird. I really like this line. I love the way the the dark paint has pulled at the edge there and then the water has created some lovely white up through here and I've left some white paper blank. Because white isn't really in the palette of watercolours usually, I mean sometimes it is, um, you leave the white of the page to as your whites and then if you've finished your artwork and you want to go back into it with white make sure that you wait for it to dry otherwise it'll end up becoming gray and a different type of color so 
At this point, you might be thinking, hmm, there's some really nice things happening on my page. If you want to cut them out when they're dry and, and create a card with them, that's a really nice idea. Or you might be noticing, I really like that shape and I want to practice that. So I'm going to leave this picture for now. I'm going to wait for it to dry and then I'll come back to it later and I might add in some branches and a different colour for the little birds to stand on. But I know that if I do that now, what do you think would happen? The thing that would happen is that my wet brush will make all the other work that I put into it, it will um, make it bleed and run. And that might be something that you really like, but it might not be what you want. So I'm going to leave mine for now and then I'll come back into it later when it's dry. Now that my watercolour has dried, I'm going to go back into the picture with some other colours and I'm thinking because I've used a lot of blue, it's nice to either go with the harmonious colours and continue using some of the more reds, reddy purples, or I can go something really contrasting like um, a more of yellowy kind of greeny colours. So I'll have a think about that and have a play around. If at any time you'd like to have another piece of paper to try the colours next to you, that's always a really good idea. So while you're playing, if you have a little piece of paper that you can try before you put it on whatever you're working on, that can be a really helpful technique. I'm going to go with using some of these colours now. So this is the um, set that I bought from the internet and they're pretty good um, quality colours and you can see really easily what the colours will be. They start down here and then they go up there and like that. So um, I'm just going to have a think about what kind of colours I'll use. I'm going to try it out over here. Now my water is really blue so I'm going to change it around. This one I prepared earlier. So if you've got dirty water, it's nice to change it. So I'm thinking of some contrasting colours, something that really stands out. So as you're painting and adding things, just notice the strokes that you're using. Like, for example, um, overworking watercolour can really damage the paper. So one simple stroke can be enough. Sometimes you might accidentally flick some paint somewhere where you didn't intend it to be but that's okay it can end up being a really nice effect to let that free flowing line go that way so I'm just thinking about what lines did I enjoy using I can still hear my children in the background playing I'm still making sure my brush is facing all the um, bristles in the same direction, but I'm also lying it on its side. So I don't know, I've chosen a brown colour to, to contrast that blue, so it goes into the background. And as I keep on going with that one colour, it gets uh, lighter and lighter. Hmm. So after you've had a little time playing around with some more colors and some more shapes and more lines, have a think about some more detail that you might want to go back in and add. 
if you feel dissatisfied with what you have on your page, um, feel free to get another page. Just keep on going. Start again. Make as many pages as you like. There's no right or wrong. We're just playing. If you look at your page, sit back and just relax as you're looking at it and notice what you appreciate. What's working for you? What do you see and notice and think? I really like the way that's doing that. So just spend some time noticing those things and maybe think about if you could leave those things that you really appreciate and add things near those bits. Like I really like what's happening here, but it looks a bit um, like you can't really tell what's going on. So I'm going to add in some more detail somewhere else. Like, and this is standing out a bit too much here. So I'm going to just mix some of that blue and some more water to dilute it a little bit. Think about composition. Sometimes um, if you put things that are off balance it makes it feel very harmonious as well. So putting some strong marks down here helps me to feel more of a gravity in my composition. And it's kind of got a triangle composition as well. Where else should I put some things? I'm just going to have a little think about what I've got here for a little while and I'll come back to it. So I've had a little think and I'm going to add in some more of my darker tones here. Just to add some detail. So with my little tiny brush with a little point on the end. I'm going to add a little bit more water to it so that it's um, hmm, doesn't seem to be making a nice fine tip. If you want to try it out and see if you can make a fine tip before you start doing details, that's always a good idea. just noticing the different things in my picture that I want to add to. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that. I've added some a beak and some little feathers there but it doesn't really look the way I want it to look so I'm gonna get a clean brush and this is gonna change my picture but I'm gonna put my paint brush like that and see how that completely changes it but I like that better so be be bold don't be afraid to completely change something if it's not working You might have a picture a ma that you've made. You might have a range of artworks that you've made. Now, whether that's the one picture or lots of pictures, or if you've just got lots of different marks that you've really enjoyed making, they will all be unique and they'll all be special to you. And wherever you're at in your journey of making art and playing and trying new things, I, I would love to see them if you'd like to share them you can um, contact me via Facebook or Instagram and um, we've shared those details as well in the, the post about this video and um, my name is Gabby Wilmot and yeah I hope that you've really enjoyed using watercolors to relax and to explore and to um, create beautiful things and noticing the beauty of watercolors and I hope to join you again another time. Thanks, bye.